Now we're looking at the Gen 6 Otter Dome and the different ways you can do fiber connectivity to that. Can you explain a little bit about that? Sure, this is a lot different and I think a big improvement over the previous models we were talking about, the old Otter Dome Gen 5 as well as the universal mounting system. This Gen 6 model actually brings the fiber optic module that much closer to the actual oh, camera. Nice. One difference is you have to be specific here. You have to buy the mount configuration that you want with a dash F option. And we'll put okay. some of that information on the screen so you can see it. But you have to be specific. If you want the fiber optic version or the fiber optic capability, it's a specific model that you mm -hmm. need to buy. The cool part of this is, I'm just gonna use this because it's easier for me to, to mm -hmm. use as a demo, but the fiber optic module in this is accessible directly through the top of this wall arm. There's a removable cap. We'll cover that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But this is the pendant mount, which is specific for this Gen 6 camera. Mm -hmm. This pendant pipe mount basically has a board inside of it. It's the same board that's in, in, the, top of the, in the top of the dome. And it makes access to the fiber pretty simple. So there's a board and basically you see the uh, SFP socket on the bottom. That's a full-time piece and that's okay. why it's, it's a, a they, these are model specific to mm -hmm. having the fiber optic option. But again, this is the same module or the same board that's in the top of the wall arm. Mm -hmm. But again, this allows the fiber optic module to effectively be at directly at right the camera. Now. And there's no copper wire connectivity between mm -hmm. this board and the camera module itself. It's all done through this onboard multi-pin connector that, that goes from there. So it eliminates a little bit more of that copper, gets, a, yep. gets the fiber optic module closer, eliminates any possibility again for damage from um, you know high voltage or from any sort of interference from electric um, interference coming into the unit. So big difference between this and there's a lot more information. We'll get into a lot more detail mm -hmm. about the the specifics of difference because in addition to it being closer, there's there's some information that's detailed that you need to understand about the differences between what kind of fiber here and, and the speed and so on and so forth in terms of connectivity. And we'll cover that. We'll break all this apart okay. and we'll cover that in a second. Let's go get our screwdrivers and check it out. All right. Now looking at the Gen 6 Autodome PTZ mounts, we took the actual camera module off. So these are utilized with the fiber optic connectivity parts. Can you show us those and how they would connect and wire into the units? Sure, this is the two options as we talked about earlier. The uh, fiber optic connection, the, me the media converter is inside these two pieces. So mm -hmm. for the wall arm, the module is under this cap and we'll take that off a second. And for this pendant pipe cap, um, that it is basically above this board, and I'll take that board out in a second. First thing I'd like to do though is cover a couple of differences mm -hmm. between the G6 arm and the, the universal mounting option and the, and the G5 um, fiber optic options. Mm -hmm. These are very important um, and they're noted differences. So the first thing is that the power options for the G6 are 24 volts AC, 110 AC, and 36 volts DC when you're using this fiber optic module. You still, of course, if you're using copper, you can still have PoE, but in this configuration with the fiber module, again, 24 volts AC, 110 volts AC, or 36 volts DC. The second big one, which is very important, is that this camera and this module specifically are one gig connections, 1000 base T connections. The, um, with the other option, you had a, it was a 100 meg only option. So when you're connecting, you need a um, SFP module that will do one gig and you need either an input on a switch or the media converter match on the opposite end, the receiver call it, that, that is a one gig appropriate um, type uh, media converter. The next thing is that um, the fiber, um, the, when the SFP module is inserted in the socket in the back of the unit, this copper connection for the camera, which you would probably use for troubleshooting, is not active. You, if you wanna take advantage and you wanna do troubleshooting at the camera with a copper connection, you're gonna require that you actually remove the SFP socket, or the SFP unit from the socket itself, and that will reactivate that 
that unit. The last thing is um, you should not in any way, shape, or form uh, remove the SFP socket. It is not hot swappable, so make sure you unpower the camera and you go from there um, to remove the socket, then repower the camera up, or again, before you put the thing back in, before you put the SFP back in the socket, power the camera down, add the SFP back into the socket, and then you can bring the power back up on the, cam on the camera. Steve, one of the questions I know comes from the field is, somebody installs just an ethernet, you know, a metallic ethernet cable, and then they want to change it to fiber, or is this field upgradable? So one of the big things here is that in that other option, and the other video talked about this, that option was a was a accessory that was added to the actual unit. In this unit, in the G6 option, it is not upgradable, and you must buy the mount with the fiber optic option. So it's a typical model number with a dash F at the end. You can certainly replace the mount. So if, you, if it is done over copper and you want to upgrade it to fiber, you just need to buy either the, pipe, the pendant pipe or the, um, the pendant wall, wall arm, and that will take care of the upgrade for you. So you, you will need to rebuy just the accessory. It's a minimal investment, but you will need to do that. Okay, and one of the other questions, does Bosch have the SFP modules for these fiber optic units, or can they go elsewhere? Yes, we, we, Bosch does sell them, and you can also buy um, SFPs to mat, match your specific application. Uh, note that some of the switches, if you're taking the connection directly back to the switch, you may need to buy the manufacturer of the switch's SFP because of some software or um, key software key type things where that, that SFP needs to be specific to the switch. And then at that point, you also may need to buy an SFP that matches with the one that's in the, in the switch. So that you really kind of need to take a look at. Again, I, I would suggest that you contact the office um, support at midchest.com and we can help you out choosing that. But we will need to know what kind of switch you're using and what kind of um, ethernet module you're using for the for the receiver on the on the head end side okay all right let's dig into this okay two things one i've already installed the um the fiber in and the module into this pendant pipe cap this is pretty easy to get apart so there's four thumb screws here it also takes a flat screwdriver i took the liberty of of uh, leaving a couple of them loose so it didn't take me very long to get them out um, and even again with big hands, you, it's easy, easy, easily accessible. This board basically folds out. There's two nice um, catches here that'll keep it from falling out. And obviously this is typically hanging from above. So at this point, this is facing down to the ground. What you see is this is where that SFP socket is located on the back side of this board. Uh, they have a couple of really nice little places here where you can do some strain relief, a nice place to wrap your cable around and go from there. So. The SFP, the other thing with the SFP is that you, you know, it's connector specific. So you need to know that it's a, a, a one gig connection as well as you need to know that the type of connector that, that you're going to be using on the fiber. Um, so that's, that's specific as well. I put Velcro here on the, um, these pieces, the strain relief pieces. You can also use um, a small wire tie. I'll show you a little bit of that when we take this cap off. So again, once you put this in, feed the wire, uh, push the SFP in the socket, connect the, the wire to it, strain relief, and then you would basically just put this back in, tighten your thumb screws up, and again, I would encourage the, you don't need to wrench them to the point of breaking them off or breaking the circuit board, but tighten up with the screwdriver so they don't vibrate loose once you get them finger tight. Tighten all four up and then, and then you're good to go. The other thing is you need your power connections obviously here. This is that copper ethernet connection. The cable would feed into here. That is inactive as I noted before when that SFP is inside the socket on the back side of the board. So that pretty much covers the, the pendant mm -hmm. pipe cap. So with this unit, there are three screws on the top, typical security screws that you basically take these, unscrew those three then this lid will come off. It's connected via a nice little rubber connector here to keep it from falling on the ground because obviously most of the time you're going to be well above the ground when you're doing this. 
you see the same thing. This is the same top side of this board that you saw on the other. And effectively, you're going to take this SFP socket. That everyone comes with this protective cover here. You take that protective cover out. And again, you would push that SFP in the, in the unit. And then you would take your fiber cable. And remember, when the SFP goes in, the uh, metallic Ethernet connection is inactive. And make sure the power is turned off. <laughs> yes. So um, I didn't take the back box off of here, but effectively the same thing goes. You'd put the, the connector in, do your service loop, push your connector in until it clicks, do your service loop around, and then again, there are two, um, there are two really nice little loops here that you can feed your wire ties through. Mm -hmm. And then we'll use wire ties on this. Make sure you remember this is glass, so you don't need to uh, cinch these up um, in any way, shape, or form where they, where, you know, you're going to damage or break the fiber. But again, you have two nice places there. Bosch was kind enough to provide those strain reliefs where you would do that. And then you can feed your fiber back through the arm and it would come out basically inside the, inside the wall arm. Trim these off. And again, once you're done, you take this, and obviously this would have come out of the arm before we did that. Once you're done, you put the cap back on, tighten your three screws up. Do make sure you tighten the screws up um, all the way. Again, don't need to, to uh, break the screws off in the casting or anything, but this is protection against the weather. Um, it does have seals around each screw, and it also has a grommet and a gasket around the lid. And again, don't forget you need your security bit to do that, but effectively that is how you would put the fiber optic module or how the fiber optic connectivity works in both the pendant mount option and also the wall mount option. Okay. Steve, one other thing I know you brought up earlier to, to it, the back box itself, we call it the surveillance cabinet. Can you show everybody where, again, this is so flexible, you can bring in cabling or conduit from the back, the side, the bottom. It really helps the installer with the installation. Just, I mean, you can just take it and move it around and, and show. Sure. Um, the main thing is, the, the, the surveillance cabinet comes with two side entries and two bottom entries. Uh, it, the, the box and the mount is also provided with grommets to keep those watertight yep. if you're not using those. Uh, they're typical size, so you can bring your conduit, use a conduit connection, um, and bring the conduit right in. You can separate your power from your fiber or your power from your, from your um, Cat 6 if yep. you need to do that. And again, there's plenty of space inside the security cabinet to do that. Accessing the security cabinet from the arm, very quick, we'll open it up and show you. And, and one of the, the nice things that, you know, again, we'll go into the other videos, the Gen 4, Gen 5, and the universal brackets all use the same back box. It's the arms themselves that are different. So again, in the retrofit market, and we all know forward backward compatible is not the easiest thing. Right. Bosch made this as simple as possible. Right. And typically, again, if I had done this, I would t feed the cable out of here mm -hmm. and it would come out the other end of the arm. But this shows you the space you have inside. This happens to be a 110 power supply. It, the only difference between a 110, if you open this up and you don't know if it's a 110 power supply versus a 24. This is a step down transformer, so it takes 110 on one side, down steps it to the other. If this is a 24 volt box, this transformer is gone. There's a small black jumper cable that goes across that configuration. That's the only way, that's how you can easily tell that's a 110 versus a 24 box. But again, you can see you have your fiber, um, I'm sorry, your conduit adapters, two in the back, two in the bottom, two in the side. Bring your wiring directly into the box. Great, Steve. And where again can they uh, ask for help? So again, I know that this is a little bit odd, uh, lots of miscellaneous pieces. Please don't ever hesitate calling the office and uh, contacting us at support at midchess.com.